the name of all the most compassionate and most merciful. King Faisal Center for Research on Islamic Studies welcomes all the attendees at this uh, speech, which is part of a series of uh, lectures that the uh, center organizes. This is about the foreign fighters in leaked, in leaked DICE documents. This is an analytical study for the fighters who are coming back from DICE. There is interpretation service, and we hope that everyone put his phones uh, on the silent mode. These documents are important uh, because of uh, certain reasons. This is the most comprehensive database about the Saudi fighters in Daesh or in ISIS, not those who participate in with Daesh or ISIS, but even with Al-Qaeda organization. So these documents represent this sample that Dr. Abdullah has analyzed. It is the third of the participants of the fighters in Daesh in Syria. And with regard to the scientific research or methodology, so the third is a treasure or a trove treasure. And it is rare to find uh, such huge amount. This is not a random sample. It is a real sample and it has great value. So in terms of the scientific research, it is the highest database that has been found, that has been researched in the area of scientific research. Prior to that, uh, there were other uh, databases that were about uh, gathering and leaking, but they didn't reach, this was about more than 700 uh, cases. There were uh, Singyar documents, there were about 700, and prior to that, there were Thomas documents, uh, 539. This database, uh, this database comes because it is a detailed database that reveals the map of the age and geographical and the cultural background and the socio-economic backgrounds of the fighters. We wish that it discloses or reveals the psychological aspect of the fighters, but this could be also tackled in other research papers because it brings all these elements together. This database was described by Richard, the head of counterterrorism in the British I I six maybe. These documents are a coup a coup d'état, or this is a breakthrough in the fight against Daesh, and it is a trove treasure of information that is very important to different agencies, and particularly for intelligence and security agencies. Because when we read the reality in correctly, we can deal with it in a sound manner. When we read reality wrongly, we will deal with it in a wrong manner. The documents or the gathering of this information in the literature of the Takfiri groups or excommunication groups have different pathways. The jihad, jihad group in Egypt, or the fighting group, were using encryption, encryption in the data. They rejected any real description of the case. And then Al-Qaeda came around, and they were, to, they were divided in two groups. You have Abdullah Azzam and his group. They began uh, in preparing the documents, uh, particularly in Babi region and in, in the camps of Abdullah Abdullah in Afghanistan. The second uh, group, which was the Takfiri group, you have Ayman al Zawahri, and the group, they rejected to have any recording. And Bin Laden, one of the people who writes to, who likes to write, but he rejected to write documents about his recruitment. So there was a lack of information about the Ansar al-Muhajirin. 
Daesh has has uh, also inherited this division, but since 2013, they written they have written down their uh, their their information. So they began in recording detailed data for each recruiter or for each uh, person being recruited. Sorry. So they have a large or a huge database about uh, their individuals. The study has been prepared um, by Dr. Amir Abdullah bin Khalid bin Saud, the head of research and the head of the security studies unit at King Faisal Center for Research and Islamic Studies. He is an assistant professor of strategic studies at Knife uh, Knife uh, Security uh, University, and and he is a, a fellow of King's College in London, a researcher of uh, security studies that has been published in a number of journals and uh, international papers. And he received a PhD from the College of War from King's College and the master's degree in uh, global security from King's, King's College and the bachelor's degree from King Saudi University in, the, in law. And for us as researchers, we always refer to doctor to the to the speaker's speech about the uh, soft power influence that has has uh, made a lot of controversy since 2016 up to now. And we are still questioning what is the, this soft power that he is going to talk about uh, in his speech. So we. You are welcome to, uh, and you are kindly requested uh, to put your uh, your phone off or you turn it off. In the name of Allah, at the outset, uh, I would like to welcome you all at King Faisal Center, and I hope that I will give a rich and uh, entertaining speech. Dr. Abdulmanim. He introduced me well about the type of these documents, and I will try to be brief uh, because researchers uh, uh, spend a lot of time or spend a lot of time about their papers. I will talk about four points, main points. I will try to interpret these documents when they were uh, leaked and who leaked them and then after that i will use the methodology that i used in this study and then the body of this language which is the analysis of the data it was divided into three parts and following that uh, the results and the findings before we start May I try to give you a picture, or draw a picture, 759 uh, Saudi individuals being recruited, not, not all of them, uh, some of them might be Saudi nationals and some of them might be residents in Saudi Arabia. Let us see the picture with regard to the phenomenon of uh, the foreign fighters in Iraq and Syria. Uh, Saudi Arabia was not the country that has sent the largest number of people of the foreign fighters in Iraq. It was the first country on the top is uh, Tunisia, which has sent 6,000, and following that, Saudi Arabia, 3,000. And since 2011, for all the uh, terrorist organizations, including Daesh and others, but the picture will be reversed when we compare it to the uh, population, to the population in the Arabic and Muslim countries and the number of Muslims in, in some Western countries. We, f we find that the uh, rate of the Saudis uh, is in the lowest, in the lowest rate. And this, we don't exaggerate when no, we do have a problem, but the problem is with regard to Daesh is more clear in other areas, in other regions. Three days ago, I read, uh, I read the statistics in The Economist that the, West, the, Muslim, uh, the Western Muslims represent 1%, but the rate of the Muslims who join uh, Daesh is more than 16%. 
So the rate is huge compared, so this is a global uh, problem and it is not uh, uh, limited to Saudi Arabia and Arab countries, uh, although we are suffering from it. The leaked documents, these documents were leaked in 2016. They were leaked by defectors from the organization and the first people to receive it and then there was a limited number of people who got these documents, or media organizations or media outlets and academic. One of these uh, uh, institutions that re received these documents, the International Center for uh, uh, Radicalization, the International Center for Radicalization, I was lucky enough. At that time, then when I spent that time, I spent one year and a half as a, a research fellow, and I have seen these documents. At the, at the beginning, there were more than 20,000 documents, but after, uh, after deleting the repeat, repeat repetition, there were uh, 4, 000, uh, uh, more than 4,000 documents uh, about foreign fighters who joined Daesh uh, of different nationalities. The significance of these documents, these organizations uh, rely on secrecy or uh, they depend on secrecy and it is very difficult to uh, to understand uh, the inner workings. Uh, this is a picture of these documents, uh, the information being taken out of this uh, document. You could see that there are 20, uh, 23 uh, columns or 23 or 23 Nice, but some of them were not meant to be filled out. You see uh, the level of uh, uh, loyalty and the date of a killing. So this is meant to be filled out later on. So it was supposed to be as archive of every uh, of every person who joined that organization. Some or most of this information of, of the information was very valuable. And there are information about the blood group uh, that has uh, uh, no scientific significance or research significance. With regard to the methodology, at the beginning there were six phases. It was the sorting out and the nationalities and also deleting the repeat uh, uh, documents. And out of that number, that 700 and uh, seven, more than 700 were coming from Saudi Arabia or originated from. Then they were, they, these documents were coded and given certain numbers. And this is the first phase. And after that, these data were entered into Excel sheet in order to deal with them more easily and also to classify, or also to categorize them and then the analysis of data um, put them in comparable uh, context and I tried to to go back to the previous databases whenever that possible and compare that, uh, that to the previous groups in order to see if there is a difference or similarities or uh, as the doctor said they were singular documents and these were about the people who joined uh, Al-Qaeda in Iraq in 2007 and 2006 and the American the American forces were able to get uh, to put their hands on these documents in Singar. Thomas has written an important book about Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and he was able to uh, to bring documents or to gather documents since the 80s up to 2000. And Aaron Zellan also in 2014 and 2013 was able to gather uh, citation citation documents or citation documents. He, he gathered 300 statements of Saudis. So these were important documents. Uh, so, so we could compare them. So this is the Excel sheet that, that I have worked on. This study was written in English, so you can see what is in the yellow color. This is what I have added. So the date of the person being recruited was not mentioned in the document. Uh, what is the age of that person or uh, how old was that person and the date of entry? So we can uh, calculate his uh, age and I'll call the previous jobs 
and the okay the uh, educational the educational background of these people also not all these data has uh, analytical significance but the data was that was important I was able to divide them into three groups the first uh, the uh, the the CV of the uh, the individuals, the average age of the Saudis was less than 24 years, less than 24 years of uh, old. These are young people of extremist and radicalized people, and if we compare them to the other groups of the first waves of the uh, in Afghanistan, they, uh, the average age was uh, uh, in Iraq, it was 23. So they are in this range, except with Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, but this was not uh, confined to the foreign fighters, because it it was about Saudis who have committed uh, terrorist acts in inside Saudi Arabia. But what was uh, uh, grabbing the attention were the ages of the people recruited to Daesh from other nationalities. It was about 26, 26 uh, of age. At this age group or this cohort, it, it was about 24 years, but 78% uh, were less than 30 years old. What was strange is the uh, the the disparity of the ages and the, the, the oldest person or the eldest person at that was uh, the, the, the people who were born in 1957 and they have so there is disparity of the ages as we see the majority of them 78% uh, were less than 30 years this gives us an indication that the majority of this group were raised were born and raised after after uh, the 9-11s uh, uh, era or post 9-11 and despite of that despite of all that uh, the, these, these terrorist organizations were able to attract these people this is a global problem uh, so the attraction was from the east and west more than 30,000 foreign fighters from for, of more than from more than 100 countries and these were new generation of fighters with regard to the social status 73% uh, were singles and 18% and were married and 9% was unknown if we compare them 61% of them of other nationalities and they were singles and 30% were married so the majority of the Saudis were singles so the age is less than by two years for the Saudis. A ten percent. This is not a marginal group. We are talking about one hundred and thirty-eight persons of Saudis in this document. Ninety, ninety-three of them that they have children. One of them has eight children, and the majority have one child. Or uh, this makes us to pay attention is was the motivation was strong enough that they left their children and their families and went to join this organization with regard to the area of origin the area of origin or the and this is the richness of these documents although there were previous information but the this information there was uh, different uh, regions from the different regions of the 13 regions in Saudi Arabia but with different traits uh, this map may uh, uh, make it easier to see you have in the north and the Jiran 5 and Al Baha and until we reach Al Qasim you have 134 and you have 200 uh, from Mecca with regard to the numbers uh, Riyadh area has the largest number and after you have a Qasim and Mecca but if we come to the rate we found that if we compare if you compare them to to the population of Saudi Arabia so it is about 2.6 
four regions in Saudi Arabia has a large uh, volume. Uh, Riyadh, uh, Riyadh region, although it has a large number, it was the false. And you have Al Qasim, 10.3, uh, uh, more than double. And then you have Hail and Tabuk and Riyadh. Uh, the three regions that has the least number of people who joined is the south of Saudi Arabia. You have Asin, 1.3, 1, 1 and, and Najran, uh, 0 0.9. And this gives us an indication that what is the reason behind that. I tried to compare uh, the previous waves in order to look if this was an old or a new uh, trend. Uh, you have the Sinjar documents and Zelen uh, uh, study, and we noticed that in the previous waves, the western region of Saudi Arabia, was, they had the most, highest majority. And in Zelen's study and the current study, it became the, uh, the central region. And that study was about two, uh, in 2014 about Syria. And the, the previous was in uh, Chechnya and in Afghanistan and in Bosnia. So there was a trend towards the central region in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Thomas uh, has mentioned in his book that by the end of the 90s, uh, so the, uh, the central region of uh, Saudi Arabia has become the focus. These documents that we have might support this uh, uh, statement, but there is uh, representation of other regions. The Al Qasim and Riyadh and Mecca are the least areas that have object poverty, and this gives us an indication that we could challenge the existing theory that the socio economic background was the motive for extremism or radicalization. This is not the case in this uh, sample. There was a question in the, in the document. What are the countries that you have visited for each uh, person being recruited? So there are various answers to that question. What was, uh, what was uh, noteworthy, uh, noteworthy is that uh, Daesh wanted to wanted to to understand whether it was, it was possible to find uh, recruiting recruitment uh, uh, opportunities but for as a researcher this question was important uh, as an indicator about the socio-economic uh, uh, conditions when you when the person that he have visited other countries this means that he has financial uh, capability or financial uh, ability because generalization might not be appropriate, but, but this is an appropriate. So the Saudi element in, in, in the majority was not uh, isolated or poor. Uh, most uh, two thirds of them, they said that they have previous travel experiences, 25%, 25% or a quarter of them, they said that they have visited other countries. And uh, this is for the CVs. With regard to uh, uh, educational background, there was a question about about the uh, level of knowledge of Islamic studies or Islamic Sharia. There, they, some of them they have uh, symbol uh, knowledge, and there, some of them were students. Or uh, this does not mean that they have advanced knowledge of Islamic uh, knowledge, uh, because some. Of, but since it was mentioned after a symbol. Uh, I took it as advanced knowledge. The people coming from Saudi Arabia compared to other nationalities, uh, 58 of them mentioned that they have a low level of knowledge of Islamic uh, studies or Islamic scholarship. Uh, so Saudi Arabia is a conservative country. Uh, students uh, from or uh, peoples uh, from the primary or elementary schools receive uh, uh, religious uh, uh, learning or education because eight percent they said they are uh, uh, they are students uh, so these are personal claims when they talk about their capabilities they exaggerate so we should take this with a grain of salt uh, and there is another uh, element that some critics might say this is the uh, the uh, the 
theoretical knowledge is different from the practice but when it comes to Daesh uh, and uh, the documents do not indicate that or do not refer to that but this was has been mentioned uh, yeah, there were widespread cases that people move from uh, some people might not be religious at all and later on they might become uh, uh, radicalized with regard to educational background educational you have various various studies some of them answer the question of the uh, field of the study uh, the level of uh, background of education and the name of the university and the year of graduation the majority of them 300 and uh, more than 300 they have uh, secondary certificate secondary school certificate and uh, people with uh, undergraduate degree were more than 300 for travel for foreign country that has been torn by war and this is uh, makes us question uh, 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 why they have risked their future to go to these places. There is another uh, comparison which got to the educational background or uh, or educational attainment compared to labor force in Saudi Arabia. And I took uh, labor force from Saudi Arabia and the country they went to. Uh, in the on average, the people are better educated with regard to uh, labor force. So the people who have undergraduate degrees. Uh, for the, these people being 45 percent and the secondary school certificate and the people who have elementary or primary say, education are of less so in average they are better educated and this let's uh, uh, makes us question is the deprivation of economic uh, uh, opportunities or social mobility is a motivator for people a motivation to uh, be radicalized so education does not mean uh, opportunities uh, educational job opportunities so so uh, there is relative deprivation and this might be important in, in this area and there is a comparison with regard to educational level uh, in with the Saudi group compared to the other groups of other, other nationalities and the uh, previous Saudi or previous radicalized Saudi people that uh, the uh, other uh, scholar has uh, gathered the information. This group have good education uh, relatively compared to other groups and this also contradicts uh, the uh, theory that uh, people uh, who lack these opportunities uh, join these groups, radical groups. We've got to the subject of the study. 209 of this group have mentioned that their their specialty area, and I found a sample of Stephen Harting that who wrote a book in 2015 that has been that book was published, and they were able to gather information about the what these people majored in for people who have joined uh, different radical groups and so I found it uh, an opportunity to compare them and there is a representation of these samples of different nationalities the majority were specialized in engineering uh, for the Saudis this was not the case in the in the, the Saudis the majority of them were not specialized in engineering they said that that the Saudi job market uh, attracts or uh, the people who have uh, uh, studied engineering they find job e easily in Saudi Arabia so 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 there are different analysis uh, analyses for that with regard to the previous job to the previous job all of this 700 more than 700 will answer this except for 55 people there were a lot of entries so I tried to categorize them and I put them in 11 categories the first group were students 32 percent and followed by the business sector and the private sector it is not strange that the students were the on the top because of the age and this was uh, repeated in all the waves of the extremists 15 percent said that they are jobless they are jobless if we exempt the students if we 
so this result will move up from 15 percent to 23 percent if we put into consideration that uh, the Saudi group was uh, good uh, was uh, better educated this is significant uh, but we should avoid also that the egg average was less than 24 percent so uh, the, uh, huge, uh, so the jobless might be new graduates uh, two percent has mentioned that they were jobless but they were recently graduated and um, there is also the other nationalities uh, in Daesh the uh, jobless people were seven percent the other point that five percent of this group they said that their uh, jobs were the previous uh, uh, scholar of the Al Qaeda people that 22 percent of that sample that he studied uh, were in the religious uh, the religious uh, uh, arena or religious area. The reason might be the the discourse of uh, Daesh was different from Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda usually to try to uh, make them to authenticate their ideas, and Daesh was more concerned about uh, the authentication was taken from uh, the Al Qaeda, and you have the uh, s cinema or the films, and try to attract different people, different category of uh, people. The third element is uh, the the suicide bombers about the fighting role or the combat role for each uh, uh, people they were given three options a fighter and suicide uh, suicide bomber or being someone who would immerse so the difference this does not mean that he's going to kill his his uh, friends and colleagues the, uh, the, 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 the so the the largest majority uh, tried to be uh, uh, suicide bombers or fighters if we took the people who were married out of this of these fighters it is less than 18 percent those who took the uh, suicide uh, suicide suicidal role were more than uh, uh, those who who chosen to to die were higher than those who were mere combatants and there is a comparison of the Saudi group and the tourists from other uh, uh, nationalities and the Saudis in senior documents uh, so this is also significant you can notice that in senior documents the people who have chosen suicide uh, suicide or uh, suicide uh, or uh, bombing uh, uh, and the people who are, have chosen uh, uh, fighting was uh, 84 percent and this uh, lead you to question why uh, the the options of uh, the choices of the Saudis have changed uh, from the uh, choice of death or suicide uh, operations Al-Qaeda in Iraq was an insurgency group and they have a strong enemy that was the US so there was a motivation for the people who joined da for Al Qaeda uh, uh, Daesh or ISIS has created a state or established a state and tried to build a bureaucracy and they have announced a caliphate so this new project an uh, exciting project makes life uh, more uh, more uh, better and there was a question have you joined jihad in the past 90 per 91 percent said they haven't have previous experience so this is a new generation mostly its radicalization was for new circumstances and not for previous experiences four percent as they said they have and five percent that they haven't answered the question 32% who, who said that they have uh, previous uh, jihadi experience 
these are the countries 18 percent in Syria and this means that they understood the question before joining Daesh because they said in these documents that they came to Daesh from Jabhat al-Nusra or from Ahrar al-Sham or the uh, Free Syrian Army. The dates of uh, entry, you have 2013 and the, the month that have seen the largest number of people was September 2013. If we compare this to the people recruited from other nationalities in these documents, the month that has seen the largest number was June 2014. After 10 months of the months that have seen the largest number of Saudis who joined. Uh, this was a few weeks about the creation of this uh, of this uh, organization. What have what has led the Saudis in 2013 to join uh, this group and then the number decreased. In my opinion the uh, the entry of Hezbollah in 2013 uh, publicly in the war in Syria in in uh, with the Syrian regime was an important uh, factor in the first wave of of the migration of these Saudi young people to join that uh, terror organization the, and the risk uh, the Saudi uh, the Saudi government uh, in 2014 has has put Daesh and Jabhat al-Nusra and other groups as terrorist organizations and uh, Saudi Arabia also approved or passed a penalty of two years for every person traveling to the conflict zones whether this to uh, to to uh, for every person traveling whether to join Daesh or to other reasons to these uh, conflict regions this has reduced the number of people of uh, traveling so the statistics up to 2014 but in 2015 and 16 then the numbers have degrees decreased uh, to a great degree we do not we should not forget that in 2013 there was uh, uh, there was also the uh, acute uh, acute level of animosity between these two groups uh, between Daesh and Al-Qaeda and this might be another reason that had reduced it uh, so this is going to uh, we go to the entry points uh, or the crossing points there were uh, 15 points uh, at the Saudi or uh, the Turkish uh, the Turkish Syrian border but four points have received uh, more than 80 percent of these people you have Tel Abyad, Jarablus, Azaz, and, uh, and Atama. These are the crossing points. Azaz, on the, on the Turkish border, you have a Kelis city or town. And some of them have mentioned this, but uh, the crossing was the same. And Atama in the Syrian border, and Rehan on the uh, Turkish border. And it seems that the crossing was the same. Or the entry point. These are the entry points. What was uh, uh, significant is that the rates of the flow of people have has increased from the uh, west to the east. Atama is on the northern western part of the Syrian uh, Turkish border. The entry was in 2013, as also from the northern western part. The most of the entry was in 2013. Arai and they start uh, in 2014. Gerablish was uh, uh, was inactive and then became active. So this reflects the changes on the ground. Uh, with 2014, Daesh has lost uh, its areas in the north of Syria, and they began to control Raqqa in the east and the. Uh, center of gravity moved in these regions when Daesh lost uh, in 2015 all the Turkish uh, entry points across the Syria uh, Turkey border this has reduced the number of people uh, who wanted to join uh, the smugglers the smugglers uh, 
the Saudi groups, uh, there were 60, uh, 60 nicknames of uh, people who smuggled them into Syria, but four of them have smuggled more than 200. You have a Muhammad al-Shimali, uh, this he is an Iraqi uh, uh, who was a Saudi uh, citizen of Iraqi descent. To the degree that in 2016, the uh, the State Department has uh, put uh, five million dollars uh, on his head, uh, five million pound on his head, and this is the time frame work uh, in which they operated. And there were a number of variables, uh, a number of uh, uh, data in these documents. I tried my best to try to figure out whether there were social relationship, previous social relationship uh, uh, for traveling to Syria. But there were a number of Saudis. These are five people. Three of them from one family and two are from different uh, two. They entered Syria on the same date, but the, the smuggler was the same person and they were coming from the same city in al -Wajh. And the people who recommended them were the same person. This is an indication indicator that they have some relationship before traveling there. So uh, radicalization does not uh, come uh, or happen in vacuum. But they they were not from the same family, but they are two families. But they, they came from the same district and from the same city. And this is another indicator. But on the other hand, there are other groups, there are eight people, these are Saudis, they entered on the same day from the same entry point um, by the same smuggler, but every one of them came from a different town or city. So not all, not all the people entries have a previous uh, relationship, but it gives us an indication or evidence that Daesh was Uh, was uh, preparing safe houses, safe houses for these uh, recruited people at, uh, in order to smuggle them to inside Syria and to smuggle them in groups. Uh, in some days, there were a lot of people entered in, in uh, from different nationalities, Saudis and, and non-Saudis. Uh, the findings, uh, the most important findings, uh, these were a new generation of uh, terrorists and they were more extreme and far right and they were uh, mobilized in uh, a faster rate compared to uh, the previous ones. And this is uh, radicalization was a response to events and current uh, uh, conditions 91% said that they haven't previous experience of combat or fighting. In my opinion, with regard to the Saudi group, the increase of instability and the lack of security and, and also for, uh, fragile countries is, have more influence than the socio-economic conditions we found that on average the Saudi group were uh, have good education level of education and they were not uh, they were not uh, poor uh, generally speaking they were not poor or poor background the social social media and the internet has facilitated uh, communication uh, even uh, 15 years ago the security security consequences of this mobilization transcend the time of the conflict itself if we if we took into account the uh, mobilization in afghanistan so this will be followed by uh, security problems uh, we are not talking about saudi arabia uh, daesh have tried to conduct and to carry out to carry out uh, uh, explosions uh, in saudi arabia and uh, they were defeated by security forces, but I'm talking about the region as a whole, and Saudi Arabia is not isolated uh, from that. And here we might talk about this point. The 
religious ideology, the role of the religious ideology is secondary. And this is not the case in most of these cases, or, but this is in the majority of the cases. This comes after the person uh, uh, become convinced of a certain ideology. So is it, it does it precede or uh, comes after that? Uh, so we might discuss this later on during the Q&A uh, because the uh, violent radicalization or violent extremists, what makes the person uh, 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 because this is a complicated issue, uh, you cannot you cannot uh, confine it to uh, two or three reasons. So uh, one person might be radicalized for a certain reason, for certain reasons, and another person might get radicalized for a different set of reasons. Some of them you might find them in every country. So we may talk about this later on. And here the uh, the uh, the wide-ranging comparison uh, that might transcend the socio-economic and ideological and religious uh, religious uh, factors. This focuses on a certain country or a central region. And terrorist organizations, they set their religious discourse or rhetoric on a certain or narrative on in certain regions, and this is very clear with regard to these regions. We need to understand to study this uh, this uh, uh, phenomenon in each country in order to try to find uh, uh, appropriate uh, solutions and not generalizations that might apply to other. Thank you very much. Thank you.